I've always wondered whether it would be possible to rotate a three-piece in the bag intraocular lens in both directions, that is both in the clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. And we all know that this would be difficult for three reasons. Firstly, is the sweep of the haptics. The open end of the haptics as well as the tips face the anti-clockwise uh, direction which is why it would be difficult for us to rotate it in this direction as it would snag the capsule. The second reason is the stretch induced by implanting a 12.5 millimeter diameter intraocular lens into a 10.5 millimeter bag. And the third important reason is the frictional drag force that occurs because of the large surface contact area between the posterior surface of the uh, intraocular lens and the posterior capsule. Now these factors do offer rotational stability to the intraocular lens. At the same time, they make rotation of the IOL a little cumbersome. And I wondered if there's any way in which one can make this lens rotate freely within the bag. I got an inspiration from the coin trick analogy. If you try to rotate a coin with it resting flat on a surface, this will prove to be difficult. However, if you stood the coin on its edge, then gently tapping it will make it spin in either direction. This occurs because of reduction in the surface contact area. Hence, the trick is to tilt the intraocular lens to make it turn. Implant the intraocular lens within the capsular bag and once this is done, the lens is tilted with the help of an irrigation aspiration cannula. And gently tapping the surface of the IOL would make it rotate in either direction. I simply pivot against the rim of the optic using the shoulder of the haptics. This is how it works. The tilt of the IOL relaxes the equatorial stretch of the capsular bag, reduces the frictional drag by reducing the surface contact area, and also allows the IOL to rotate on its shoulder using the inferior optic rim as a fulcrum. Let's see this a little more clearly in this patient with oculocutaneous albinism, and the zonules and the haptics, as well as the bag, is very clearly visible. The IOL is tilted with the coaxial IA probe and tapping on the surface of the IOL would make it rotate freely in both directions. There are no stretch lines occurring in the posterior capsule or in the anterior capsular rim indicating that there is uh, no zonular stress at all. Some applications. The most important application is in the implantation of a toric intraocular lens because even if you overshoot the mark it's always possible for you to rotate it backwards and restart again. So what I do in these cases is I gently pivot rotate so that the marks on the toric IOL are parallel to the corneal marks by parallax and then I drop it into place. It's an interesting uh, usage of the tilt and turn technique. I found that the trailing haptic was completely curled upon itself in a very awkward fashion and uh, try as I may I could not release it to get back into the bag and hence I used the pivot rotation or the tilt of the intraocular lens to create a space within the capsular bag. So once this was done it was easy to tuck the trailing haptic into position. A final important use of the uh, pivot rotation technique is in small pupils because if you can pivot rotate the intraocular lens, it means that it lies within the capsular bag. If the IOL was either in the sulcus or partly in the sulcus or the bag, then it would not be possible to pivot rotate it. So coming back to the question I posed in the beginning, whether it would be possible to rotate an IOL in both directions within the bag, by now we know that the answer is yes, provided we use the pivot rotation technique.